Wales, home to miners, mountains, and a very big adventure. Where are we, Edward? I don't know, John. As Jedward are about to give an unsuspecting group of sightseers... What's up, guys? John Edward! A trip they'll never forget. Yay! They'll go head to head to see who will be the best tour guide. I am ready to teach. You've let the team down. I haven't let any team down. It's going to be explosive. Here we go. So which twin will get very messy? <laughs> and who will let off a whole load of steam? Yes, yes. It's Jedward's big adventure. Come with us, there's so much to discover. A crazy adventure with me and my brother. We'll dig up things that will freak you out. This is Jedward's big adventure. Woo. Be it all, guys, there's so much to do. There's a whole planet out there and it's just for you. You never know what you'll find and we'll mess with your mind. It's a hair-raising trailer that's totally wild. Amazing Jedward's big adventure. The United Kingdom, a country rich in history. So who better to bestow this knowledge on future generations than... Jedward? Their challenge is simple. To visit our biggest attractions and compete against each other to be the best tour guide. Each with help from their celebrity friends. Do I look like a raven? <laughs> High five! Now it's time for the boys to find out today's location. Ella, where are we? I don't know, John, but we've got to find Blood Navin. Where could it be? Go on, go on, go on, go on. John, we can make it! Yes! We're the first twins ever in the whole entire world to ever reach the top of this Welch Hill. And what a view! You can see everything from here. <gasps> I can see Britney Spears. John, what? Wanna roly poly down that hill? Race you? Edder, Edder, stop, come back, okay? We can't roly poly on the hill, because we have to wait for our mission. Our mission? Cool. Good, look, here it is. Bags, you read it first. Oh, I wanna read it. I wanna read it. No, Edder, I'll read it, okay? Let's read it, okay? Dear Jedward, welcome to the wonderful world of Blan Nevin. In just 24 hours' time, you will each have to give a guided tour to the area, to a party of tourists, whoever gives the best tour will be. Around the winner, I'm receiving amazing money, can't buy prize? Cool! But whoever loses will face a terrible forfeit with a tummy full of something called gruel. <laughs> Quick, let's call for help! It's Richard Whisker from Tracing Beacon Returns and Cal Spellman from Friday Download! Yes! Guys, Kate, it's so awesome to have you guys here. Okay, what do you guys know about the World Heritage Site of Blanavin? It's a World Heritage Site. It's in Blanavin. Uh, okay, um, I think we're going to have to ask the real experts about this. You guys relax while we've got the facts. All right, see you guys later. So, while Paul Kell and Richard are left sitting on a Welsh mountaintop, how long does it take to find out a few facts? Yeah, I know what you mean. Jedward had just one day to discover everything there is to know about Bly Navin. Working here was hard and dangerous. Today is the twins' only chance to get the all-important facts. Tomorrow, they'll be separated and compete to give the best guided tour, with help from their celebrity friends. John will team up with Richard and Edward with Kel. Where are we, Edward? I don't know, John. Where Let's go we? find out more about the place this way. Right now, they must get all the info they need for tomorrow's tour. So can this man help? I hope so. What up? I'm John. I'm Edward. And together we are Jedward. J to the E to the D to the word. Jedward. What's, What's your, your name? name? I'm Avion. You got a really cool beard, Avian. So Blan where are we? Where are we? Avian, what, is, what is this place? What's Blanavian? Blanavan is the correct word. So why are we here? What happens here in Blanavan? Ah, well, Blanavan in many ways was the start of the Industrial Revolution. 200 years ago, there was very little here at all, just a valley with a couple of people in it. But that all changed when three businessmen named Hill, Hopkins and Pratt came along. They discovered coal, limestone and iron ore, all vital to the Industrial Revolution. In 1788, they opened an ironworks. A coal mine and steelworks soon followed, plus an entire town for their workforce to live in. Thousands of people came to work here, from England, Scotland and even Ireland. Edward. This is coal. That's coal. Whoa. It's really light. This is limestone. This is iron ore. 
Whoa, so we had, it's so heavy. So we had coal, we had limestone, and we had iron ore. And they were able to put those together and create iron. So it's not like... But without that, without the iron, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have all this today. There'd be no television, we wouldn't have mobile phones, hair dryers, and so on. So, so this, this rock here is the most important thing ever. Without this, I would not have a mobile phone, I would not have anything today. That's right. Evian, you know what I'm thinking? I think we should go down the mine. Well, yeah. there's one right behind you. We've never been in the mine before. Let's go. So Jed would have discovered their first facts about the Industrial Revolution. Tomorrow, they'll be the ones guiding the tourists around. Oh no. What are you doing? So it's very important they remember everything they're told. We're totally cool. Next up, they're going underground with Ian, the miner. We have to wear a helmet. I'm afraid you have to wear safety equipment. What about really? hair? Hey, helmet? Sorry about the hair, lads, okay? I just have to plonk it no, on. Is that okay? Really? Wait, I gotta, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> ah, no! Ah, my head! Anyone got a slay drama? Watch, watch, okay, watch! Okay. Oh, well done. Right. Can I try mine as well? It's a magic trick. Right. Let's go. Right, oh, come on, let's get it. So, Ian, how old are you when you started mining? I was 18 when I came underground, okay? My grandfather was a miner. So it runs through the family? It runs through the family, I'm afraid, yeah. Wow, we're actually here. Whoa! God. This is so cool. We're so far under the world. Come on in, boys. Walk this way. Whoa. Right, boys. This is where coal comes from, then. Underground, yeah? That's the coal. That's the coal, okay? Every job underground was very, very dangerous. Before electricity, the men used to use candles as well. So if your candle went out, you'd be in total darkness. Is it okay if we turn our lights off for a second to experience we've the darkness? We've got to turn off all the lights. Turn all our lights off, yeah? But we're scared of the dark. Turn your light off for me, please. Did you hear something? No. Oh, no, it sounded like it came from underground. It's so dark, I didn't see it. I think you're imagining things. No. Pass the binoculars. Hmm? I need to spot John and Edward. They're taking ages. Where are you? John and Kay, I'm right beside you. So what do you think about that, Ben? Scary. So can you imagine now young boys and girls, five years old, working 12 hours a day, yeah? In that situation. The job was to sit at the ventilation doors. It was a tough, lonely, miserable job. Especially if their candles went out. But it wasn't just the children who worked in the mines. Horses dragged the coal up the mine shaft, but they didn't just work underground, they lived underground too. The only time the horses ever returned to the surface was during the miners' two weeks holiday. Can you believe that? No. So what do you think now, boys? You made it tough enough stuff to work underground? I think I've realized how lucky me and John are, and I feel really sad for those kids that had to work down here years ago. So children worked in the mine, a fact which has shocked Jedward. Right, boys, back up the mine then. All aboard. Edda, I can't believe kids used to work down the mines. I'm never, ever going to complain about anything ever again. What is this? Things you have to put up with. I ask for milk, no sugar. Take them back. Honestly, pop stars today, eh? Tea break over with, and the next stop for the boys is a former ironworks. Come on, let's go to the building. Tomorrow, they'll compete against one another to guide tourists around these ruins, and they'll be expected to know everything about what it used to be. What are we doing here? This guy can tell us. Yes, he can. Meet Ivor, the ironworks man, ready to give the boys the info. I'm okay. What is this place? Well, this is one of six furnaces at Blaine Arvon Ironworks. Where we're standing right now, there used to, there would have been a, a big pot, was there? A big pot? The temperature year, 200 years ago, would have been 1,500 degrees Celsius. Wow. Iron ore would be roasted in kilns, and then along with the coal and limestone, it was heated to over 1,500 degrees Celsius. The molten metal was carefully poured out of the furnace and into channels, where it could cool to form pig iron. So cold, because the channels look like a sow and a baby piglet. Ow! Oh. Was it real dangerous here to work here? It was a very, very dangerous place to work. It come out white hot. It'd be blinding. Let's go find out more. 
The boys have sussed out that working in the Industrial Revolution was dangerous, but they'll also need to show their tourists where those workers lived. Ivor, let's go check it out. This is a working class cottage. This would be the living room. This is where everybody would have, uh, would have come down. There was no running water, <gasps> no sewage, <gasps> electricity, no Jedward <gasps> No Jedward CDs? These cottages would have between 18 and 19 people living in them. Where did everyone sleep in here? I can show you. So you're saying 19 people stayed in this small house? Yeah, two up, two down. And these beds were never, never cold, because the ironworks never closed. So as one shift would be coming off, then you guys would be getting up and going to work. It's very different to bedrooms of today. There could have been eight or nine people sharing this tiny house. So you'd have to be really smelly to be able to wangle a room of your own. Children probably wouldn't have even had their own beds. They'd have to sleep on the floor instead. And that didn't mean a nice warm carpet. It meant a cold, hard floor. No furniture and, of course, no electricity. So the boys have been given the lowdown on the Victorian home. Just, John, stop, we're going to break the floor. Now they need to find out how the workers spent their hard-earned wages. It's time for a trip to the Victorian shop. This is a company shop. After you've done your four to six weeks work, the company will pay you in tokens. Tokens? That's what's called the truck system. You can only spend them in a shop. You can only buy goods that the, um, the owners think that you're going to need. And all at 30% yeah. more than anywhere else. So it's a rip-off. They sell hair gel. No, no hair, hair gel. Spray. No. We've got gruel. Gruel. It looks sick. It looks totally yuck. Everyone liked eating this back then. Yeah. That's so... Yeah. Oh. Ew. And there'll be lots more Victorian gruel to come for the losing tour guide. The winner, however, will be decided by who gets across the most correct facts to the tourists. Let's find out more about this place. Tomorrow, they will each be given three of today's stories and a celebrity helper to assist them. So Richard and Keller are relying on the boys to gather all the info. Oh dear. Do you think they'll learn a lot of facts? No. It's Jedward. I'm with you, Kel, because there's much more Jedward need to discover before they're ready to become tour guides. Hey guys, what's up? It's John Nedward. John's recording, and I am talking. Now they need to find out all about canals. Cool. What is this place? Now, this is a canal uh, which is used to take the coal and the iron from Blynaven down to Newport, where it could be taken around the world. Canals have a towpath along them for the horses to tow the boats along. Hard work for the horse and for the unlucky person who had to clean up the towpath behind them. For the boatman, it wasn't just a job. It soon became a way of life. But when the steam train came along, the narrow boats couldn't compete, and horse-drawn boats died out completely. Edder, we've got to learn more new facts about the canal. This was a, an easier way of transporting the coal and the iron, and it would have been brought down on a narrow boat. And they are only 2.1 metres wide. Okay, we're going to have to remember that, John, okay? 2.1 metres. Because they now have got fish to pull the boat. <laughs> No, the, no, no, we, we haven't got fish strong enough in this, in this canal, unfortunately. No. Shark? No sharks. No sharks. No, no sharks. So we've had narrow boats, truck systems, iron ore, no sharks, lots for the boys to remember for tomorrow, and there's still one last story for them to cram in. The invention of the steam engine. Evelyn, these steam engines are so amazing. Who invented these? There were quite a few people who tried to put a steam engine onto rails. Uh, there was a competition held in 1829 to find a steam engine that would pull a train from Liverpool to Manchester. Five locomotives were entered into the competition. First to drop out was Cyclone, after the horse it used for power fell through the floor of the engine. Next out was Perseverance, after it failed to reach the required speed of 10 miles per hour. Sanspareil nearly made it all the way, it cracked the cylinder and had to drop out, which left just the rocket and novelty. But damage to a boiler pipe meant even novelty had to admit defeat. So it was George Stevenson's rocket that was pronounced the winner, and in 1830, the first modern railway line between Liverpool and Manchester opened, with Stevenson's rocket pulling the train. <laughs> the wheels on the train go round and round. No, round. don't, John. Evan, okay, it's so cool you tell us about all the history of this train, okay? But can we go inside? 